who's safe? Mm-hmm. There's nobody who's safe. I suffered, my mother suffered, my sister suffered, my, my, my father suffered. Pooja Vidhi, of course, she's like a Bahubali of my life. Justice cannot be based on gender. Why don't you eat? I'm saying I don't feel like eating. He says, but you have to eat, so otherwise you'll die. And I said, I'm okay with that. There have been instances when people have died, people have committed suicide oh. because of... There are... There are many stories like that. Hi, my name is Karan B. Oberoi and you are watching Bollywood Hungama. We have with us uh, Karan Oberoi. Um, he has had some unfortunate incidents in the recent past and we'll talk about that. Uh, pleasure having you on Bollywood Hungama. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, how has life changed in the last couple of months for you? Well, it has changed quite dramatically to be honest. Something that was completely unexpected. I wasn't... Uh, even my, my, my worst nightmares I could have imagined things would have panned out the way it was. Because I'd lived 20 years in the industry and have, I've had a career and I've, been, I've had a blemish-free record. I have, even, I have never broken a traffic law. And to, uh, to go through what I did, uh, the suffering that I went through, my parents went through, my family went through, my loved ones went through, it was nothing short of a nightmare that I would never wish on my worst enemy. This is, um, it's just not on. I mean, whatever happened uh, is, is something that, uh, that's, that has broken me into pieces. And the only way I healed was because of the love and support of so many people that stood up and said, we are with you. Mm. One month in uh, jail and apparently yeah. there were 92 inmates in the same yes. yeah. uh, in, in a small place which is not equipped to handle more than 20, mm. maybe 10. And the conditions are abysmal, they are, they are subhuman. Um, there are people suffering there. And uh, the inmates are locked in, as in the under trials who are innocent until proven guilty are locked in with the, with the hardened criminals. And there's intermingling like that. And uh, there's everything that can go wrong with the particular system is there. And there are many, many innocent people that are languished behind bars, um, for languishing behind bars for no fault of theirs. A lot of them are completely innocent. Mm. And that's a fact. And it pains you to see that sort of, uh, you know, inhuman, uh, you know, experiences all around. Mm. It's just very bad. Right. And uh, the lady who had accused you, she is now behind bars. Yeah. Um, well, she's not been really te- technically behind bars. She's, mm. she's been given bail. Despite such evil shenanigans, she's been allowed to walk free mm. in a matter of three or four hours. That's the question one needs to ask ourselves. Is it, have you made, have, are we making fun of law here? Have you reached a point where we can say, you know what, I can use the law to manipulate for my for either vengeful or vendetta purposes and get away with it how can you mm. get away with something as as as, as bad as a fake case mm. she so was arrested and she was set free in th- 3 4 hours mm. and that's that's rubbish so you put an innocent mind, mind behind bars into, into in, in, for, for, with, in the worst possible conditions for you know uh, and and then you let a person who's who's proven because the lawyer has given a testimonial to, to the effect of saying yes she was one behind this whole planning so there, is, there, is, there are witnesses to that fact, they've all ex- admitted to that, all of them have been left scot-free. Mm. So you ask yourself this question, you, and, and anything, every, any individual of this country, an honest tax-paying citizen who's a proud Indian, would ask, yourself, ask himself that question, saying, is this the nation we are building? Are we, I'm going, are we going to allow this to continue? It has to stop somewhere. Because if it, it could happen to me, despite how I've lived as an honest citizen of this country, who's safe? Mm. There's nobody who's safe. You're not safe. None of them are safe. Mm. So you have to ask yourself. You also that said that people will be afraid to uh, marry because, you know, it'll um, you know it'll set brother. It'll set the whole society apart. Mm. Men um, will be very very scared of talking to women, dating them, marrying them because this can apply. This particular space, three seventy six, can apply to anyone at any point of time, even in retrospect. Someone mm. can turn back because they had a fight. Uh, a husband wife had a fight and. The wife went down back saying rape 20 years back. Or um, a girlfriend boyfriend can have a tiff and he can say rape 3 years back, 5 years back. And it's just that word that, 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 that's good enough to incarcerate you. You're put behind bars, we'll ask questions later. Let's just lock you up first. How's that okay? Mm. It, so it creates, it's, it's a very, very um, strange society. It creates an unstable equilibrium between the sexes. You want to build a world out of love, affection, care, and understanding. We want to build. We don't want to break. This sort of thing will just lead to more breakages. If, we, if every man is going to talk to a woman with a lawyer present, you know, to figure out things, or I'm going to sign a document mm. to absolve, indemnify himself, what are we talking about? Mm. What are we building? 
So it's, it's very scary. What really happened uh, when you came to know that such and such a uh, thing has happened and um, all these reports suddenly came in about uh, you being I accused was, of rape. I was numb. What was your was state in, of mind at that point? My, I, was in a, I was numb and I was in a state of shock. Mm. I couldn't imagine someone could go to such an extent to, to, um, to settle a personal score or a vendetta. Mm. I couldn't imagine. I, could, no, I still can't imagine any human being will stoop to, so, to, to such um, uh, you know, levels. Mm. To, just, to do what? To, to, to make someone suffer? Well, who suffered? I suffered. My mother suffered. My sister suffered. My, my, my father suffered. All my friends suffered. I can't imagine. As a human being, I can't imagine that I will take, um, draw any solace or happiness out of, out of you know, making someone suffer like that. So I was in a complete state of shock. It was unbelievable. Mm. I couldn't imagine this was happening to me. And from what I understand, you have been told that you, uh, you have to be uh, present in the courts whenever the uh, yes. The courts want you have yes. to be uh, around. I have to be on to the police station. Case. Yes, I have to report to the police station as in when called for mm. uh, to to be there, and and the, and the ordeal continues. The trauma continues. It's like a domically sore on your head. You're constantly going to be worried and in fear because the perception is that the lady has been arrested and moral victory doesn't count here. You, you, mm. How does it? That's all right. And I trust. I'm not the sort of a guy who'd be happy with when someone else suffers. I like I said. I don't grudge anyone anything. I would not grudge a space like that to my worst enemy. Forget about the lady in question. Mm. So there's, that moral victory has a sense, I, I mean, it's only relief to my mother because my mother is of the opinion that if someone can go to such an extent that they can perpetuate attack on themselves because it takes a lot of you know, evil machination for you to do that, what could she do to you? So that's what my mother's constant uh, worry would be. Mm. She would not let me below the building. She said, no, you're not leaving the house. Because someone can attack themselves, how are you safe? You're going to be in trouble. Mm. So the only reprieve she has today is of saying, okay, they've taken, they're, they've taken cognizance of the fact by arresting her that this is what the, the extent to this person can go. Mm. So you've, you've gone ahead and tried to ruin my reputation, my life, you know, for what? Mm. But uh, surprisingly, you have been um, supported uh, very, very strongly by two women, uh, Pooja Bedi and uh, Barkhatrian. Uh, no, I, not just two women. I think that that would be uh, that would uh, Pooja Vidhi. Of course, she's like a Bahubali of my life, my mm -hmm. best friend. She's a very very vocal supporter of men's rights and women's rights. She's some she's somebody who represents justice. She'll fight mm -hmm. for justice. She's very feisty. Mm -hmm. So there was Pooja Bedi. There was my sister. There was Barkha who who was leading the men's uh, commission. But in addition to that, there were legions of other women mm -hmm. that came to the court hearing. I mean, the you know even. The court premises were filled up, with, were filled up with women who were saying, no, we support the men. So that way I was very, very blessed. Mm. I would read about it in the prison and I would say, okay, so-and-so standing up. Swarms of people that stood up said, you know, and that's what you, when you start feeling, you know, there is something called karma here. Mm. In 20 years, if I've, if I've earned something, then I've earned a reputation and a karma that's working for me today. For all the people that have stood up and said, you know, we are with you. The day I, my, I got my phone, I'm the SIM card. I didn't, don't have my phone yet. I got a new SIM card. I had 2,500 messages, my phone crashed, the new phone, mm. of support and love. So I was one of those blessed people, you know, very, very blessed people who, um, people who were able to um, get that and garner that support. And many would say that you're lucky as well, but there are many who are not, not lucky. Uh, Which is why I'm there. I'm the, I'm, I'm the guy who's going to speak for them. And you're a poster boy of men too. Yes, men I'm very, and very happily so. Um, so when I came out, there were other voices that said, you know, you've gone through so much suffering and trauma. Why do you want to relive this trauma every day by recounting it to either in an interview or speaking about it so, you know, vociferously. And I said, no, this, this ends with me. This ends with me. No man will ever have to suffer like this. Because if you're saying I'm the poster boy or if I, if I as a celebrity or as a, as a public figure have a social responsibility, then what kind of a public figure am I? that I let the other people suffer because I suffered. And I say, well, that's not my business. It is my business. Mm. 600 people that are suffering in Taloja, that are dying every day for no fault of this, are my business. Lacks or lacks of people who are suffering on account of this are my business. Mm. So this ends with me. So whatever it takes, if I have to be the voice, if I have to go make a legal representation, I'm doing all of that. I'm not stopping here. Mm. There has to be an even keel. There has to be, there, there has to be justice. Justice cannot be based on gender. Mm. I hurt as much as the woman that, that's, 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 you know, that's violated. My pain is equally important. I've been, I've been very, very proud feminist all my life. And I, I still am. I believe in Me Too. I think it was a great, great movement because it, it, it created a minimum detriment 
for people to be able to take advantage of women. Mm. But the same thing applies to men too, because gender justice is gender neutral. Mm. So, so yes, I'm, 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 pass, I'm, 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 you know, soldiering on, and I'm doing whatever it takes for my voice to be heard and for um, all the actions that need to be taken from a legal standpoint to make corrective measures for society. Right, and uh, there have been instances when people have died, people have committed suicide oh. because of. There are. There are many stories like that. Many, many stories that you either you have read about them in in the papers. And there are many stories that are voiceless, that have no representation, either in media or um, families or friends. They're just languishing there because they don't have a voice. There are many stories, I assure you. I, like I said, I, it still pains me when I, because I've heard those, in those 35 days, I've just heard stories and many, many stories and you know. Like when I walked into Taloja, they looked at me and they said, we recognize a criminal when we see one, you're innocent. Okay, um, yeah. get some water. Yeah, it's fine. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Give me a All right, and you've also said that uh, you're planning to write a book. Yes. You are in the process of write, yes. writing a book, yes. apparently. Um, so, what exactly is that, that book all about? Well, um, those are my experiences within the jail um, for the 35 days that I was there. Plus, what has happened in, in, in my life as regards this particular case is concerned. Um, it's that, so I'm writing those experiences and I'm, I'm trying to, um, you know, put some things straight. All, all the stories that are, like I said, the, the stories that are there that haven't been heard. So there is there's those experiences that I'm writing about. Mm. Because like I said, I spent a lot of time uh, with those inmates, 24 hours we would be, you know, we'd be together. And I'd hear uh, some really, really sordid stories of how of human suffering. So there's a lot of it uh, that's, that's there that I'm, I'm articulating in a book. Mm. So, um, um, and also to be honest with you, I cannot say, I was staying amongst criminals, but I saw a lot of humanity there also. I, I was quite touched by a lot of things that went on there that, that uh, placated my faith back in, in, in human behavior per se. Mm. There were people that, uh, so I went in, uh, when, the, when I first went to Taloja, I didn't eat for about a week. I didn't just didn't eat or sleep. Because I was completely in a state of shock. I was absolutely numb with grief. And um, they realized, and so the inmates would come to me saying, Ab I'm thinking, I don't feel like eating. He says, but you have to eat, so otherwise you'll die. I said, I'm okay with that, you know. So they, they kind of, you know, gathered around me. And every time somebody would come for mulakat, you know, mulakat is when you're allowed to meet right. your people. Right. Someone would get some food to eat and they'd give it to me. Because the food is not fit for human consumption. So they'd give me that food. I said, but that's not enough for you. And they said, no, that's fine. You need to survive. So they would share their food. Um, there's that you're given two sheets to wrap around you one to kind of lie down on and one to. So they would use three, four of their sheets and say, let's make a bed for you. They'll roll up their clothes to make a pillow for me. So there are enough and those, those, those are things that, that just make you think, you know. There's good in all of us. We have to get that goodness out. We've got to look at people, you know. So there are a lot of things that, that, that can be corrected. And, and like I said, it's journey of a thousand miles starts with the number one. One is to stop the injustice and then so on and so forth. So yes, so that book um, is something that's a work in progress that I'm writing. Hi, my name is Karan B. Oberoi and you're watching Bollywood Hungama.